All right, so our focus today is on this thing called the equal values method. This is a way for us to solve systems of equations like what we've got here. Remember, when we solve a system of equations, we're going to come up with an answer that has both an x value and a y value. That's going to be our final answer. Now, you already know how to solve this system one way. You know how to do it graphically. And I would like you to do that right now. Could you please graph these two lines over here and use those graphs to find your, your solution? Okay, if you need a reminder from Wednesday, we just graph the two lines using the slope and the y-intercept, just like we always do. And then we find the point where they intersect, and that's our final answer, our solution. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to do mine as well, but don't just look at my work and copy it. Go ahead and work your own out. Does anybody have any questions on how to get that 2 comma 1 by graphing? All right, so we're going to work the problem again, but I'm going to show you how to do it using this equal values. We should come up with the same answer. Right? That's, that's one of the cool things about math. If there's multiple ways to do a problem, that's cool, but you should get the same answer every time. So let's see if we can get that same answer. Let me show you how this is going to work. So basically, when you have two equations in this style, you are allowed to take those two equations and combine them together into one single equation with an equal sign in between. That's why it's called equal values. So my new equation would be negative 1x plus 3 equals 2x minus 3. Do you see where I'm getting those things from? You might have. And they might have called it something different there. Our book, our book uses a slightly different vocabulary terms for this particular method. They might have called it substitution back then. All right, so that gets to us a new equation. It's a single equation. It only has x in it. What do you suppose we're going to do next? Yeah, we're going to solve it. You guys have solved lots of equations like this. We've been practicing this, right? So go ahead and solve this equation. Do the steps that we normally do. Solve the equation. You've got x's on both sides, so you're going to have to decide which x you want to get rid of. Go ahead and do your steps. Now, I'm going to work through mine up here, but I'm not interested in you guys just copying my work. Go ahead and try it for yourself. We'll see if we get the same answer. Ooh, that's a lot of threes. As you wrap it up there, I'm hoping, did you get the same x value that you got when we solved it graphically? You got a 2? Good. Are we done? If we hadn't done this graph, will we be finished with this? What are we missing? 
We need a y. When we're solving a system, we have to have an x and a y. So we're only halfway to our answer, but we actually did most of the work. The y part is, is a lot easier. So here's how you do the y part. You want to go back to your original equations, look at these two equations and tell me which one looks simpler to you, the top one or the bottom one. This is a total judgment call. There's no correct answer. You think the top one looks easier? Anybody think the bottom looks nicer? I kind of like that that has a positive 2 instead of a negative, but we'll go with the top. We'll go with the top. If you want to try the bottom, you're going to get the same answer either way. So I'm going to write down that top equation here, but I'm leaving my x out. y equals negative x plus 3. And what do you suppose we're going to put in for x? We're going to put 2 in for x. That's what we just found for x was 2. You need to be writing this down. Thank you. And then we'll use that to solve for y. So that's just negative 2 plus 3. What is negative 2 plus 3? 1. All right. We got our x. We got our y. We are now done. We'd write down our final version of our answer, which is x always comes first, then y. And there we go. And that is it. How many of you have seen this before? A few people have. Cool. Um, for those who have seen it before, what are your common mistakes that we want to look out for? Do you, do you remember? I can think of a couple. There's a really common mistake that happens in the very last step when we write down our final answer. What do you suppose that is? Flipping the x and the y. Yeah, I always do a double check and make sure. I, I, that's why I like to write x and y above here, just so I make sure I'm getting the right number in the right place. It's really easy to flip those. The other common mistake that I see is that people will stop when they get here. They'll be like, oh, x equals 2, I'm done. And then they never find the y value. And that's a very costly mistake on a test because you're only getting half credit for the, for the problem when you're almost to the end. So don't forget that last little step. Let's do a couple more of these. This time we're not going to graph it first. This time we're just going to jump straight to our algebraic method. When it says algebraically, that means without a graph using algebra. So let's use our equal values method. We're going to take these two equations and stick them together with an equal sign in between. Equals. And I am going to put a 1 in front of that x. And that's a familiar looking style of equation. We've been practicing these, so go ahead and solve that. Get me a value for x. Got a lot of negatives in this equation, so be careful with those. Double check as you go. Don't make the classic mistake. The classic mistake is you get x equals, and you think you're finished. We're only halfway in there. We need to get a y value, too. When you're looking at these two equations, which one looks simpler to you, the top one or the bottom one? The bottom one has smaller numbers, right? Yeah, I kind of agree. So pick whichever one. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go with the bottom one this time. Rewrite it, but leave your x out. And what are we sticking in place of that x? We're going to put our x value that we just solved for. We got 1. And then we'll solve that. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. All we have left to do now is write down the final answer. But keep in mind, it's really easy to flip your x and y. So double check you're not doing that. I'm going to write x, y up here to help me not make that mistake. 
x comes first, that was 1, y comes last, that's negative 3. And we're good to go. We're going to pause on graphing that one for just a moment. Any questions? All right, I'm going to go over one more and talk my way through it. If you're feeling comfortable, though, go ahead and finish that example two on your own. And if you get both of those done, go ahead and graph those two equations for both of these and check and see if you get the same answer. All right. So I'm going to work through this and talk through this, but you're welcome to ignore me if you're feeling confident. Equal values method means we're going to take the two equations, put them together with an equal sign in between them. And then we're going to solve. I got x's on both sides. I have to determine whether I want to get rid of my negative 3x or my positive 3x. I think I'm going to get rid of my positive 3x. I don't know why. Some of you probably got rid of the negative 3x. I bet we're going to get the same answer, though. Negative 3x minus 3x, that's negative 6x. Plus 2 equals, all that's left here is a negative 4. Now we're ready to get x by itself. Let's start with that plus 2. Minus 2 minus 2. And then let's divide. I've got a lot of negatives in my work here, so I gotta, I'm gotta. i probably going to go back and double check that I didn't make any mistakes. <sighs> negative, yes, negative is the, that's right. Negative divided by negative is positive. And I need to pick one of my original equations. I think I'll go for the first one. Actually, that's the second one, isn't it? Put that one in there. Are we, doing we will, yes. If you're finished, though, go ahead and graph. Did you graph them both already? You did? Okay. Yeah, just sit tight. And you're welcome to start on the on the next side if you like. Or you can just sit, sit tight and wait for us. All right, and now time to write down my final answer. Let me make sure I get it in the right order. My x was 1 and my y was negative 1. Is that what y'all came up with? 1 comma negative 1? All right. Did anybody have time to graph it? Oh, Bradley, did you guys did too? And when you graphed it, did you come up with the same two answers that we got algebraically? Hey guys, I got an important question for you. Can I get your attention even if you're working ahead? If we can come up with the same answer by graphing it, why would we ever want to do it this way? Why do you suppose I'm teaching you two different ways? Actually, there's going to be two more after this. Why do we want to know four different ways to solve these things? Why do you suppose? Any ideas? All right, so that's a, that's a great answer. Yeah, what if they don't give us a graph? What if we don't have graph paper available, right? Here's another one for you. Can I get you guys to look up here? I know that I appreciate that you're, you're trying to work ahead, but I don't want you to miss this. This is important. What if I gave you a system of equations that looked like this? Y equals 200X minus 351, and Y equals negative 100X plus uh, 200. Would you want to solve that by graphing? I wouldn't. That would take forever. I'd need a huge piece of paper. But we could solve it with this method without too much trouble. The bigger numbers don't make it harder, really. It's the same step. I'd probably have my calculator in my hand while I was doing it, but the steps don't get any tougher. Right? So this method would be far superior to try and solve a system like this than a graph. So that's why we want to have multiple methods. And I'd say the third reason I like having a multiple method is just 
that's one of the cool things about math is like you got a problem, you can solve it. There's lots of different ways to do it. So, hey. All right. All right, questions before we move on to the back here. All right, folks, this is your chance to practice. Now, these six problems are going to be our goal, but I'm not going to give you probably enough time to finish all six of them because I want to give you time for our assignment. I want your goal to be to get through at least the first three, at least the first three. I'm going to give you about 10 or 12 minutes here. Um, I will put answers up on the screen here so that you can check your work as you go. If you need another example, if you would like me to sit down with you and work through one of these problems with you, I would be more than happy to. I did not provide you enough space to do the problems here. So you are going to have to use, probably use some scratch paper. You might be able to squeeze one or two or three in this space. Um, but feel free to, to pull out a piece of scratch paper. And if you need paper, I've got plenty in the drawer over there. Um, let me put the answers up here and then I'll be around to answer questions and we'll come back together in about, like I said, 10, 12 minutes. Feel free to work with a partner, ask each other questions, help each other out. Um, answers are here. I'm fair warning. Number two is a strange problem. You're going to see something weird happen when you're working on number two. I want to talk to you really quickly about number two. We're going to see some of these special problems. They're called special cases. We're going to see some of these pop up from time to time. We actually have a little lesson on it kind of towards the end where we'll get kind of in depth on what it actually means. But here's what I need you to know for now. Can I get you guys to pay attention to this, please? Especially if you didn't get to number two. Our first step would be to, to put the two pieces together. Okay. And then what a lot of you found was when you tried to get rid of this negative 2x by doing plus 2x on both sides, all of your x's went away. That's what's weird about this problem. When I go to my next step, it's negative 2 equals negative 4. There are no x's. How can I solve for x if there's no x's in the equation? The answer is you can't. You can't. We are done with this problem. Now, Guys, please pay attention. You're working on the homework, but you're going to miss something that's going to be really important. It's going to set you back, okay? There are two possibilities when all your x's go away, okay? You're either going to write no solution, or you're going to write infinite solutions. It's one or the other. Now, this one is no solution, and the reason it's no solution is because this last step here is false. Do you know what I mean by false? Well, it's not true, right? Is negative 2 equal to negative 4? No, that's false. That's false. So a false is going to give you no solution. Now, if we solved it, all of our x's went away, and we had something like negative 2 equals negative 2, then we would go for infinite solutions. Okay? You're going to see these happen from time to time. For right now, it's not the end of the world if you're not sure which of those it is. Just know that you can stop there, and it'll be a special case. Okay, folks, it's time for us to move on to everybody's favorites. Applications, cations, cations, cations. Word problems, 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 problems. All right, guys, stick with me here. Hey, I gave a few of you the assignment a little bit ago. Right now, you are not to be working on that. I need you to be working with us. Guys, I'm, I'm going to ask you, this is the last time, okay? Like the last time today and the last time this week. I, you just need to stop, okay, or else I'm going to split you up. Thank you. Um. We got G and Brucey at it again. They're racing their tricycles. We solve problems like this back in first semester, but back in first semester, how do we solve them? We made a graph, right? We're going to do it differently now. We're going to use this equal values thing. So we got to write equations, but we're getting pretty good at writing equations. We know we're going to have an equation that's going to be y equals mx plus b. We know that this is going to be the change 
or the speed, and we know that B is gonna be the starting value. So we've done that a bunch, so go ahead and read through those two equations and see if you can write me, read through those couple sentences, see if you can write me a couple equations for Gia and for Brewsty. Yes. About Gia's equation, shoot. There's no y-intercept. It says she starts at the starting line, so her starting value would be what? Zero, you're right. So G is gonna have a zero here, and since it's a plus zero, we can really not, we can just ignore it. We can take that out of there. Um, since we got Gia's starting value, what's her, what's Gia's uh, speed? So four goes here, zero at the end. And then Bruce D starts at six. Remember the starting value goes right there. And Bruce D's speed is two. And again, whenever you have a plus zero, you can really just erase it and forget about it. This is actually gonna make the next step a little bit simpler because this equation is a little bit smaller. So that's a system of equations. We can use our equal values method to solve this. Take these two equations and stick them together with an equal sign in between. And then do some algebra and solve that equation for me. And then see if you can answer the question. So I know that you all know how to solve that equation. I would like for you to do it on your own right now. I'm gonna do it up here as well. Please don't just watch and copy my steps. Do your own work, please. Hi. Yeah. Oh, that's now. Yeah. See ya. Here, let me get you the assignment. All right, don't forget to find your both pieces. We need an X and a Y. Did you get an X and a Y? Oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see here. X is on both sides. I think I'll get rid of the 2X. This is now 2X equals 6. And then divide by 2, divide by 2. X equals 3. And then we're gonna take that three and we're gonna put it in one of our original equations. Which equation did you guys choose? The first one looks easier, right? It really doesn't matter though, cause you're gonna get the same answer either way. So y equals four x, but let's put that three in for x. Four times three is 12. So my solution, is three comma 12. Now this next part can be one of the trickiest parts of solving word problems like this. Can we take that solution and use it to answer some questions? That is the time and the place where Gia and Brucey are right next to each other. They're at the same spot at the same time. The question, the first question is when did Gia pass Bruce D? And, the, and it's either going to be three seconds or 12 seconds. Are you sure it's three and not 12? Uh, is it 12? Is it 12? Or is it three? Hmm. All right, I like that explanation. Did you guys hear that? If you had a graph, it was always seconds across the bottom and distance going up, right? Sorry. So the X would be time and the Y would be distance. When we graph these, that's how we graph them, right? So if X is seconds, then I think that three is gonna be my answer here, but change my mind. Mm. Is 
They do. They do. The question, though, is which one of these is time and which one's distance? That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. You're absolutely right. But one of these is time and one's distance. And when they say when, I know I want the one that's time. The question is, is x the time or is x the distance? And I, and I think x is the time, right? I really like your explanation with the graph. I like that you're envisioning what the graph would look like. So I would say, when did it happen? It happened three seconds into the race. And then the last question is, how far from the starting line? In other words, where did it happen? That would be the distance, which is the y. So that would be about 12 meters from the starting line. All right. Um, folks, I would love for you to do that last problem there. Um, while you're working on this, I'm going to pass out the assignment. Um, I'll put a solution up here so you can check as you go. If you don't have time to get this one done, that's okay. Go ahead and see if you can at least write me a couple equations, though. One for Gia and one for Brewsty. And I'll tell you, your equations are going to be in the format y equals something x plus something again. But what's tricky about this is that one person is adding bricks on and the other person is taking bricks away. So you're going to have a negative m on one of those because they're taking bricks away. Were you all able to write a couple of equations? G is laying two bricks. That means that G is adding two bricks on. So that would be a positive 2x every minute. And G is, it doesn't say where G is starts. So we're going to assume that G is starting at zero again. Bruce D's taking down three bricks a minute. So Bruce D's speed is negative three. Brucey's taking down bricks, and Brucey started off with 165. So there's our system. We just need to solve that again. If you want to leave off that plus zero, you can. Did I tell you guys where Gia and Brucey came from? <laughs> it is. It's it's always stuff that I write. My my niece when my niece was when my niece is now like your age, so she probably would hate for me to hear me telling you this because it would probably embarrass her but when she was like three she had imaginary friends and her imaginary friends were named Gia and Brewsty we have no idea where she got Gia and Brewsty from but Gia and Brewsty were her best imaginary friends they lived at the spaghetti warehouse and <laughs> they were always going on adventures together <laughs> I guess so 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 whenever I write word problems, I make it about G and Brucey, and then I used to email them to my sister, my, my niece's mom, and she would show my niece, and it would just, she would, thought it was so funny that high school students were working on math problems about her imaginary friends. She would be mortified right now if she heard me saying this, though. And I'm recording it, so I'll put it up on YouTube. Maybe I'll send her the link. She just got her first smartphone over the holidays, so I'll email it to her. <laughs> What? This wouldn't be embarrassing, would it? <laughs> I'm not saying her name or anything like that, so, you know. <laughs> There's some privacy there. You don't know which niece it was. So. 